Greetings, magical mages and spiritual sages, and to everyone listening out there. This is Age of the Mage podcast, and we're on episode 41. Today, I'd like to kind of reintroduce the concept of spiritual overlays and how they play into the overall magical persona. So I mentioned this in a previous podcast, and what we're going to do as kind of a self-exploration process, and we can journal it, and I am preparing pages for that, which I will post as soon as they're ready for you. But what we'll be doing is looking at ourselves in some different ways, maybe like, it's a little like taking a personality test, but you'll be using your imagination, and it's all about your magic and your spirit and the things you do when you utilize your soul's energy. So instead of focusing on just personality traits you use in the 3D world, this kind of bridges that part of you with the parts that you work with when you go into the invisible realms and when you work in etheric dimensions. So we have covered the seven immortal soul lines, and I'll leave a link for that um, particular video down in the description as well. So you can review that if you haven't heard that yet. And those are ways that we can envision your soul being created and then starting its journey through various realms and dimensions. And as it moves through these spaces and places and times, it acquires um, skills and patterns and talents. And so the soul lines are kind of more a marker of the actual lineage, like did your soul have a deep resonance and even be created through one of those ancient lines and it would now be showing up in energy in your physical field, which happens to align with one of the chakras. So that is a, is the soul line aspect of this of fleshing out this magical persona we each have. But today we're going to talk a little bit more about what I call spiritual overlays, and they're slightly different. The same idea uh, uh, pertains to this group of characteristics. It's, it it also has to do with your soul emerging and being created and starting its journey. And of course, moving through these various dimensions. And as the soul does that, not only does it have this deep ties, perhaps, to an actual lineage with inheritable traits, but we also find we, we resonate and we find ourselves attracted to certain realms more than others, just like we do here on Earth. We have attractions to certain cultures or certain types of food or certain types of companionship. And so we have these preferences. And the spiritual overlay concept is based on more of preference rather than innate qualities. And what um, I've done is built this imaginative type of contemplation around this idea that your soul has found kind of natural kinships and natural alliances with various types of beings in realms. And as it makes its way here to earth, it's carrying those precious memories. That soul is still attached and attracted to the realms that it favors most highly and to those places where it perhaps has even had repeated incarnations. And so we see very strong tendencies and preferences coming out in your 3D world here on earth when you have those previous experiences in other realms and dimensions that are causing you to maybe not even consciously remember, although some very much do. Some people are very, um, they have access to these prior life, earth life memories, and they they really are conscious of them. But most of us, it's in the subconscious. So we don't know where these preferences actually come from. So this is a way to sort those out. And we'll be using our knowledge that we gain from this self-exploration later as we really compile this complete picture of ourselves through the various uh, aspects of these magical persona. So there are six uh, spiritual overlays that I've identified, and I am open to anyone who feels strongly that they have another one that I haven't listed or isn't incorporated in one of these that I've listed, because 
that's entirely likely, but we will start with these six, and I think they're fairly comprehensive. So the first one that I have is other kin. The other kin are those of us who feel great ties to fantasy settings. For instance, elves, the fae, the fairy, uh, dwarves, even the orcs, any the trolls, the giants, any of the characters. Even uh, Centaur is a little different. I'll explain why. We're, we're going to come to that. But most of these humanoid characters that we would identify with that you can see in fiction and movies and other media that depict these beautiful, lush fantasy settings, sometimes stark, sometimes harsh. But we relate. We relate to these worlds, many online games uh, the role-playing games are filled with people who have very strong spiritual overlays in this category. And when you run around in those beautiful games that have been created, we just can relive some of our past uh, lives that are hidden to us. And it, we just thoroughly enjoy it. And you'll see this happening quite often. So that is the other kid category. The second category are the galactics. Now galactics are those of us that can, that feel a great bond to an extra dimensional race. It's usually extra extraterrestrial rather, but it can be interdimensional. It could be inner earth. It could be along those lines too, but it's an actual humanoid race Usually, usually it could be a cube, it could be non-humanoid, but it it feels external if, to our world. It's in the exoplanet sphere and it or the inner. And we we identify strongly, we might even have memories of being among that those peoples, those star nations. And a lot of these uh, of the galactics are here today too to help us. Uh, with information because they tend to be, they tend to have open lines of communication very often with the races they've come from. So you see Arcturians or Palladians, um, the Lyrans, these, these names we're very familiar with. Many representatives are here in human form from those places. And so they're, they're carrying such a strong connection and almost longing to be back among their people. And this is very common when we see hybrids or we see those that have the spiritual overlays from repeated lifetimes in those realms. The third I have is mythic. The mythics are those who have memory, perhaps. Uh, again, it could be subconscious memory, but they're very drawn to mythical creatures such as the dragon, the unicorn, the pegasus, and centaur, thing like that might come into play here. These are people who have very likely their soul has experienced lives in, as one of these remarkable creatures in another realm. It, perhaps on earth at another time, of course, but very definitely in a dimension where one of those mythical creatures is the sentient, the dominant sentient being of that realm. And so there's a high factor of intelligence. And when you feel you are connecting, let's use dragons, for example, when you, when you are here on earth and you feel you are connecting with dragons, it's just the same type of connection you would have with a humanoid, extremely intelligent, uh, a full range of emotion, full range of expression. So even though it's a creature, even though it's, we would classify it as non-humanoid, it is at the level of humanoid experience and intelligence. And we have those of us among us who were dragons and possibly even continue to shift into those forms, at, le at the very least in astral form and in dream states. And so they have this liaison to these remarkable creatures, and that would be the mythic category. The next is similar. I, they're the Therians. I know many of you have heard of these, perhaps by other names like werewolf or shifter. So the Therians 
are not as linked to a mythical creature that's legendary and is perhaps no longer here on Earth. The Therians identify very strongly with an animal that we could we could identify: uh, a large tiger, a wolf, um, one of these animals with certain characteristics, maybe a power animal they relate to very strongly. And they experience shifting into this, into this animal. I had a very powerful dream once in my past that I was running and I was this large, strong black cat, like a panther, and running with a friend through a forest. And I was completely intelligent. I was just as aware inside that body as I am in my day-to-day life right now. And I knew inside that dream that we were the kind of the rulers of the kingdom there, that, that as these cats, we, we were the most advanced sentient species on that particular planet at that time in that realm. And ever since that dream, it has helped me have empathy and understanding for Therians because they're living this constantly. Their their pull and their attachment to a certain animal, a certain genus, a certain species is so powerfully strong. So we see shifting when they enter into astral work or etheric work or even in very often in dream state. And I am not, I don't know for sure there might even be ways that Therians and mythics shift into different types of bodies, uh, even a, even as they stay in the third dimension. So, this is part of this mysterious world we don't have all the answers to, of course. But again, so that's the fourth kind, and that's Therian. And the fifth is the enhanced. Now, the enhanced are those who I believe have come from highly advanced cultures. Uh, probably humanoid in nature, in, in, in generally speaking, and they it use these cultures they come from are highly advanced in technology, and so they have kind of perfected the cyborg. They have perfected an artificial the artificial intelligence. They uh, they can be benevolent. It does not have anything to do with uh, negative in any way. They. They're just so advanced that they have extended their lives through augmentation and the respect for technology is, you know, the, of the utmost. It's, it's, um, so when we see these people come into earth, into our bodies, and they have patterns of living among enhanced cultures that really revere technology. I believe it's very often these people who are making the most advancements in our current technology here. They may have no memory of this, but they are highly drawn to computers. They're highly drawn to designing technologies. They are fascinated by it. They are not afraid of advancements in fields like artificial intelligence, because deep down, Deep down, their memory is positive. Their memory, their soul memory is holding knowledge that it's a good thing, that it will be good for the humans to learn more and be able to access more of this type of technology. And so we have large groups here at this time, very large groups of people who have come directly from patterns of enhanced realms. There's no doubt about it. And they are helping us with our technological progressions. And I'm hoping that those that resonate to these podcasts and messages would be the ones that can carry the most benevolent and the most helpful, um, you know, concepts into our world from their past memories and things that are their knowledge that's within their soul, because we're waiting to experience better technologies in health fields and other places. And so they will be the ones that share that with us. And the last on the of the six that I have listed are the angelic. The angelic overlays usually signify someone who has felt very close to the concepts of divine creation and divinity itself and just have their soul keeps finding themselves back, back into these realms where the connection to the divine is 
so revered and it's so dominant. It's, it's a well-known, you know, it just permeates the civilization and the culture in a positive way again. And so most of these memories that I'm speaking to today are positive. However, there have been negatives and there have been wars and other, you know, cycles of ups and downs in all these realms. And so some of our soul memories might very well have those memories too. But the focus today is uh, a little more positive, I'd say. And so we're looking at these angelic realms. Now the angelic, those that carry this have possibly even the seeds of angel, angel, what I call angel technology inside of them, and will go on to serve as angels in future times. So they have had a close affinity with angels and those who serve in that calling and function. And I do have several um, podcasts just recently that I released that give some insights more into the angelic realms. And please feel free to listen to those if you're interested. But remember, the angelic paradigm includes the demonic paradigm. It's the same world. It's just a spectrum of uh, beings and choices they've made. And that's why they, it's really very, very similar in vibration. You just have higher vibrations at the upper ends and then those that have chosen darker paths at the lower ends. But the angelic person that's here now, very often you will see many random acts of kindness, sensitivity, soft hearts, uh, closeness to some form of religion or at least spirituality that is very strong for them. The ties that they maintain with divinity mean a lot to the angelics. And also they will, um, they will have very keen sensitivities to, you know, these aspects of light versus darkness. And when things are going out of balance that way, they're very good at picking up on that dissonance and where they might be straying over here and how to get back closer to the creative source again that they perceive as divine. So these, this is a very brief review of these six spiritual overlays. And I'm just wondering, as I've described them, if you have had any feelings or felt like, hmm, you know, I'm really drawn to that. Whenever I'm researching something, I always find myself back there. Or I know that's where I, I, I know I've brought those memories in. You know, just ask yourself. I will include a link. I've put a page up on our site that just gives very brief recaps at this point of the six that I've just mentioned, but it'll help you remember what they are. And I'll be expanding that. I will be adding pages of information about each of these overlays to give you a little more feeling for how they show up in your life. And just just play around with it, just like you did with the soul lines. Take a few minutes and think about them and say, Hmm, I could see that. I could see that maybe my soul came from such a place because I am so connected to that. And it's just part of me all the time. And I didn't even realize it because this is going to later give us some insights about how we can use our magic and perhaps even the kinds of magic that come most naturally to us. The types of things that we've experienced the most tend to be those that we can do the easiest, right? So this is all leading this whole figuring out our magical persona through identifying soul lines and identifying spiritual overlays and much more to come on like things like magical archetypes. We're going to find, wow, I've really zeroed in on who I am. I know where I'm super good. I know what I can do when I go to do manifestation magic. I know, I know what works best for me. So and we can find our weaknesses, our strengths and where we really enjoy working. So it's going to be a beneficial type of experience, I think, for all of us to work through these imaginative and kind of fun um, exercises, so to speak, of self-discovery. And I hope you will enjoy them. I will close for now and uh, sending very best wishes to each and every one of you. I hope you will have a wonderful day with magic showing up in moments that you least suspect just to give you that extra boost. And uh, I will be back soon and say goodbye for now.